Welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher. In today's video, we're going to be learning about gas volumes, specifically for the quantitative chemistry module. If you haven't already seen those previous videos in this module, I will leave the playlist at the end of this video so you can navigate through them at your own pace. Also, please do feel free to subscribe so you never miss an upload from me. I am so thankful for everybody who's already subscribed. Thank you so much for your support. And if you do enjoy the video, feel free to like it and share it with someone else so they can also enjoy this video too. So let's talk about moles. We've already spoken about this in a previous video, but just remember that a mole is the amount of substance. It's how much atoms are within a given substance. Remember Avogadro's constant of 6.022 times 10 to the 23 is the number of atoms per mole of substance. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about um, gas volume. So one mole of any gas will fill up the same amount of space, will have the same volume. And this is only at room temperature and pressure. So a certain conditions this will occur. So if we had a mole of nitrogen, a mole of oxygen, a mole of carbon dioxide or any other gas, it would actually fill up 24 decimeters cubed of space. And this is in chemistry what we call the molar gas volume. So we can actually use the molar gas volume to create a calculation to determine the amount of moles in a substance or the volume of the gas as well. But remember, any calculations you do in science, if you type it, you must write it. Don't forget, you get marks for showing your working out, which is really important, especially if you make a mistake. You only get penalized once as you get error carried forward marks. So don't make the mistake of not writing down your full method and your full working out. So the question is, calculate the volume of a 0.21 mole of hydrogen at room temperature and pressure. Remember, at room temperature and pressure, the gas will occupy the same volume or the molar volume of 24 decimeters cubed. So all you've got to do is times the amount of moles or 0.21 times the molar volume of 24 and you will get your answer of 5.04 decimeters cubed. Now we can be expected in the exam to convert decimeters cubed into centimeters cubed and all you need to do is times it by a thousand. So you would get 5,040 centimeters cubed as your answer there. So one way they could ask you in the exam to utilize this equation is to actually rearrange the formula so you get different subjects depending on what you have in the question. So you could get asked to rearrange it to have the amount of moles as the subject or the molar volume or the volume of gases. So I've written out these different versions of the formula for you. Remember, you can always put this into a triangle if you need to. And if you want to use a triangle method, just remember you cover up whatever it is you want to work out. Let's say we want to calculate the amount in moles we cover that one up and we can see that the volume of gases is divided by the molar volume. So that line that goes above the molar volume, that just indicates a division sign. The line that's going straight down in a uh, uh, like, like this, um, you can see that that is a times or a multiplication sign as well. So that is how you would use the triangle method. So when you get to the next step of calculations in the exam, they like to ramp up the difficulty. So they might start off with those lower level uh, one or two mark questions that we've just talked about. But these ones, because there's multiple steps, you could get asked to do this and it could be worth several more marks as well. So it's worth knowing and knowing the steps, but also knowing what you need to do and why. So calculating the volume from a mass. So we have a reaction of lithium, which has a symbol Li. Remember, lithium is a group one metal. It reacts vigorously in water because of its reactivity. Um, water has the symbols H2O. These react together and we form lithium hydroxide, which because it's a hydroxide, it is an alkali um, and it will form hydrogen gas. Remember, we can actually test for hydrogen gas using a lit splint. It will form a squeaky pop sound. And lithium hydroxide, by the way, we can actually test for as well if we use universal indicator because it's a hydroxide, it's an alkali or a base, and therefore it will turn a purple, uh, blue color under universal indicator. So the question is 3.2 grams of lithium reacts completely with excess water. Calculate the volume of hydrogen which is produced. And they've given us in this equation, they've given us the relative atomic mass of lithium, which is seven. And we can find this out from our periodic table. Remember, you're looking for the mass number, the biggest number there. And the molar volume, as we know, is 24 decimeters cubed. So this is a bit of an indicator, a bit of a clue for you in the exam of what you need to do. 
So the first step is you want to calculate the number of moles. So all we need to do is do the number of moles is equal to the mass of the substance divided by the relative atomic mass as well. So we would have 3.2 grams, which is the mass in the question, divided by 7. And we would get an answer of 0 0.457 and a load of other decimal places as well. We've got lots more numbers after the 7, but I have just rounded it slightly. You don't have to do this. You can keep that number in your calculator and just utilize it so you don't get any rounding errors. But you don't have to write the whole thing as well. It's up to you. Um, this next step, so now you have the number of moles. You want to work out the ratio between the lithium and the hydrogen. This is really important at this step that you check the equation has been balanced already. If they ask you to do this, you need to obviously balance it first. You will get marks for that. But just double check as well that the equation has been balanced. In this case, it has. We have two lots of lithium to one lot of hydrogen. Remember, you're looking for the coefficient, the big number in front of those molecules, which is where I got the two and the one from. Um, remember, hydrogen doesn't have a number in front of it. So we assume it has the one. There's just one amount of it. That's that's where I got the one from. So we can see that there's two lots of lithium, which makes one lot of hydrogen. So all we need to do is divide our number of moles for lithium by two to get the one amount of ratio. So if we do that now, we can see we actually get an answer of 0 0.2285. Um, and this again is in moles. The next step is to calculate the volume. So just like we did in the previous slide, we have the volume of the gas equaling the amount in moles times the molar volume. So we do 0 0.2285 times by 24. Remember, that's the molar volume. And we get an answer of 5.484. And we could round it to 5.5 decimeters cubed. Remember, if you want to convert this into centimeters cubed, all you need to do is times the answer by 1,000 as well. So here is a practice question for you. If you've been around on my channel for a while, you'll know I like to put a question in for you guys to practice. The answer or the solution will be in the description box below, but do have a go at this question yourself. Pause the video and um, write your answer in the, in the uh, comment section. I'd love to hear from you. So the question is calcium carbonate, which is CaCO3, which is a solid, that's a state symbol next to it thermally decomposes into calcium oxide, again a solid, and carbon dioxide, which is a gas. It says calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced from the thermal decomposition or the breakdown using heat of 2.3 grams of calcium carbonate. For this question, you will need to check. Remember that the equation has been balanced. You'll also need to use a periodic table, which I'll link in the description box as well. Um, to check and work out the relative atomic masses, relative formula masses as well. Do have a go at this. I'd love to hear from you and good luck. And that's it from me. I've been the GCSE science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to give it a like, share this with someone else you think would benefit from learning more. And also do feel free to subscribe as well because I am going to be posting lots more videos for revision, especially as we are ramping into exam season, but also continuing with the GCSE content as well. Like I say in all my videos, if there is any videos specifically you would like me to create, please just write in the comment section. I'm more than happy to create those um, because my aim here on YouTube is to support as many students as possible with their GCSEs and enjoyment for science as well. So have a great day. Catch you in the next one. Take care.